bring them out, bring them out. 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 Give a raucous round of applause for Michael Rook and T.I. Look, I feel like before I sit down, I should like open this wine and pour a couple glasses. Are y'all all right I mean, with that? you know, I'm, hey, I will follow your lead. All right, you have a red or white, my brother? <laughs> I, have, I have a light wine. I have, what is that? Is that a Pinot Grigio Chardonnay? Or I have the Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 2012. Yeah, magnificent. What a wonderful year. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, excuse me. Cheers. 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 Salud. Cheers. Salud. Ain't no wine for everyone else? Well, they already had their wine. Oh, okay, I'm told, cool. I'm told they already right, had their right. wine. Awesome. So I want to open up this conversation by asking you guys to both com maybe comment on maybe what that experience was for you that really shaped, really sort of defined the artist that you become as a curator, as a rapper, as an actor. Like, what was that experience? What was that moment for you that made it all gel? I had... Uh much older people that I grew up around, my uncles and so on and so forth, and I know that they were intrigued by this, 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 this music, this art form. It had an energy with it, and with this energy, it made me, it, made, it gave us something to relate when I could come in and recite, oh, nobody can rap quite like I can. I, I take, take a, a muscle-bound man and put his face, face in the sand. And then, hey, 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 look, watch what my little cousin could do. <laughs> and then, so I used to come and get called out my room, you know, when videos was on, and get to hang out with my uncles and my cousins. And then from there, I took it, okay, well, look, if he could say that, well, let me take some things, and I took it a step further and said, well, let me take the things that I saw from when I woke up this morning, went to school and came home, and at, by the time I come home, I go to my uncles and them, and then you know they tell me to perform for their for their buddies. Hey, look what my little cousins do. So then I go, well, yeah, well, my name's T.I.P. Nobody's quite like me, and so then you know I became the little guy who became accepted by older people and kind of uh, you know was uh, uh, endeared, and 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 I was the exception when other kids couldn't hang around. I could. And then we, it went from my cousins and uncles to the girls in my school, to the guys, <laughs> and to the playground, and, to the, and so on and so forth. I always wanted to be an artist. I always wanted to be a visual artist, and it was my, the only language I knew because I was really interior. Later you know, in my life, I, I realized I'm, I was gay, and I think that partially uh, was a partial reason why I sort of retreated to an interior place where I could just think you know, and be in my own protected world. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of led to my going to art school and to be wanting to be an artist and uh, aspiring to uh, sort of the self-empowerment. To, to like borrow uh, a quote from my good friend, uh, Bob Fitzpatrick, who, who was my boss. He built Euro Disney. He was the dean of Columbia Art School. He said that he went into his career uh, at Columbia and at Disney because he felt that he could be a good audience. And, and th for that same reason, I became a curator. I knew that I'm not gonna ever be a good artist, um, but I can be a really good audience, and that we need, as artists, we need a great audience too, and someone who can respond to and to reflect what's happening. I'm thinking about curate, cur curators in, in, in the, the art of curating, and, and thinking about Fat Five Freddy who I'm sure we, we're all somewhat familiar with. But uh, Fat Five Freddy, for those who aren't familiar with, is really, in essence, a curator of culture. Sure. You know, uh, here was a visual artist who ran with Jean-Michel Basquiat and Ram LZ and these guys in the uh, early 80s and was one of the very first formal voices of what a hip hop culture would be. And many of us became introduced to him through Yo! MTV Raps, right. where he was the first voice, the first face of hip hop for a lot of us in popular culture. Um, and I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna bring Fat Five Freddy, I wanna throw him into the conversation a little bit because uh, one of the things that I'm thinking about, you know, when we think about Fat, Fry, Fat Five, is the, the fact that he lived on that line mm. between visual art and hip hop. 
And I want to, you know, again, uh, throw this out to both you guys, you know, about the importance of this idea of this curator, this idea of the cultural curator. And I'm, I'm going to give a loose definition of curator. Okay. You know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, a, a curator is a person who creates aesthetic experiences, you know, um, a person who can pull together, you know, different kinds of experiences for people to create something unique and something that everybody can kind of relate to, you know, can kind of point to. The, the curator is the club promoter. You know what I'm saying? The, the curator is the one who goes and is like, I, I'm, I'm going to do this party tonight. I got this DJ, this personality showing up. I need all you people to come to this party and have a good time. The curator is that person in the middle that makes it all happen. Someone who finds the common denominator, the people who may normally not see things the same way, find a way there to see There it is. I, I went to art way. school, so I don't really know all those math terms, like common denominator. <laughs> but I get it. I get it. See, you just gave me a definition for common denominator that I never had before. I yeah. didn't, OK. Right on. Yeah. Well, I think Fab Five Freddy is a good example. It, coming back to the earlier conversation we had about audience, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, where the audience is a really important part of that equation. And it's not just bringing together the, the component parts, the component people to make it happen, but also engaging that audience. And uh, as a curator, uh, as, uh, uh, as someone who uh, brings, makes an exhibition or a, an event happen, you have to always think of the audience. The audience completes it for me, in my opinion. And so I think someone like Fat Five Freddy understood that really beautifully. Um, by uh, in, in all the different uh, uh, you know uh, facets of mm -hmm. what he did to to make hip hop culture relevant and vibrant and uh, resistant to you know at the time it was uh, it was the the economic malaise uh, of the late seventies in New York right, right. and how in spite of that it just blossomed right and it just uh, resisted. Uh, that uh, down economic downturn and, and rose mm -hmm. from the city, and I think it was because of this real genius of understanding audience and and, uh, and and the different talents that came were brought to bear. You know, I think uh, I think another way to look at it is you know you can find I don't know if it's a curator or an artist or or, or an observer, but I think that. Somewhere in the relation from one to the other, you find ways to make things that were seemingly negative turn positive. As an artist, say uh, in hip hop, well, we may before hip hop in the 60s and 70s, we may were, you know, frowned upon for being from certain areas mm -hmm. of society where people may have looked down upon you, where well, hip hop now then took that and said, no, this, I make this, this is now the cool factor. Mm -hmm. The thing that you saw as negative, I turned into a positive. Or whether it's an artist that is a, a painter or a visual artist and they say, okay, well, the person that you looked at, whether it's uh, Andy Warhol, Basquiat, or any of these other phenomenal pioneers of artistry, and they say, well, the people that you looked at and made fun of in high school because they were different and they were weird, now we have become the movers and shakers and we have become the pioneers of what is now known to be pop culture and accepted as, you know, diversity. And you now have a different perspective for something that you looked at as negative because you were not used to it, because you were not familiar with it. And I found a way to make what you were afraid of and what you were unfamiliar with. Now, even though you're still unfamiliar with it, but you are saluting it and you are, it's, a, it's endearing now rather than repulsive to you. And if anybody can make something that you were afraid of or turned off by at first and find a way to be so eloquent, so art, and, 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 and just translate their life experiences in a way that you two aren't supposed to relate. But we find a way to relate through whatever it is that this artist is presenting to you. So he's like, well, you know what? When I heard, before I heard uh, Notorious B.I.G. Ten Crack Commandments, I didn't know that it was such an infrastructure-based <laughs> business. And I didn't know how many moving pieces that there was in the crack industry. So now, <laughs> although <laughs> I'm repulsed by what it does to society, but now for some reason I'm intrigued by how <laughs> 
someone could take, you know, the, the do's and don'ts of selling crack, something I've never done, may know nothing about, may never even engage in, but now I'm intrigued. I want to know more about it now. Well, you know, and, I think that's, 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 a, that's a really interesting uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aside from being a hilarious point, I think it's a, a very significant point, you know what I'm saying? Because, again, like, if, if we go back to the sort of genesis of hip-hop culture, there wasn't really the distinction between what happened in the visual and the, the musical. 